Oh, hi viewers, um, welcome or welcome back maybe to my home workshop um, and in this video I want to build on the work that I did in the previous one creating the prototype for the uh, four facet uh, uh, drill sharpening guide and uh, turn it from a prototype into a useful tool hopefully one that's going to give us some long term use this guy in fact um, but before I dive into that I'd like to just take the opportunity to remind or maybe advise that uh, I'm not a trained machinist and I'm not even a particularly experienced machinist but um, and so please don't, don't take the techniques and methods that I show in my videos as being the be all and end all or the gospel of how these things should be done it's just what I've learnt from my own experience um, I guess so you could call me a jack of all trades master of none that's sort of old saw but I've certainly learnt from my mistakes and I've made plenty of them um, and really I'm offering these videos as a resource it's a, a set of ideas and suggestions really for how you might tackle some of the problems that um, that I face when I'm tinkering around in my workshop but anyway let's get into this uh, second video on the on the, the jig and uh, I hope you enjoy it so one of the issues I have with my lash up is that the uh, the exhaust pipe bracket that's uh, holding the or supporting this and acting as a column isn't very stiff and also I think there's a bit of movement with the um, right angled uh, sorry with the 45 degree bend piece of flat um, and you can see that uh, it's quite easy to introduce a bit of uh, movement at the, uh, the drill tip and of course that's exaggerated further when there's a drill there so uh, I want to change the way the, um, the drill support channel is supported with a much more rigid column and um, that's what I'm going to do now. I've got an idea on how I'm going to do that. So uh, I'm going to cobble something up and come back. And one of the other things I want to do is to replace this wheel with uh, this guy. He... Um, it's a much finer grit of stone, so I think should give um, a better surface finish. Uh, I don't know whether I can see on here what the grit is. I have to look at it under magnifying glass, I think, to uh, read that. Anyway, it should be a simple enough thing to do. I have to use my special little um, two pin spanner. I'd already loosened that so I didn't bump the camera. All right. In the longer term I'll make more than one of these pieces that fit onto a taper in the back of the spindle here. So it's possible to take the stones on and off without them uh, losing their, their position once you've got the balance right. Bit of a fiddle getting the nut started there. Right. So that was the <laughs> probably the easiest modification. Okay, so I've made the uh, a base and uh, an upright. There's just two bits of. Um, 25 by 25 square tube welded together um, made up a new um, t-bolt to hold it because it needed a bit longer made life hard for myself as well <laughs> because I was using or matched the um, the previous t-bolt which is a 10 mil thread I drilled 10 mil holes went to make the um, thing the uh, t-bolt and realise it's going to be a bit tricky because of the the width here. There's just not enough room for a, a 10 mil thread. So I finished up um, making a double-ended stud. It's 10 mil M10 on this end and M8 on the other end. A little messing around, but anyway, it's uh, done now. 
so we can put that on there. I'll give myself three holes to uh, uh, give them a bit of adjustment possibilities. So that's good. And um, so it's getting all set to uh, to mount this on. The, this probably needs to be shortened. You can sit and mount that on there. And I thought, well, hang on a minute. This this piece here is a little bit. Uh, I think that's where some of the movement is coming from. This thing twisting. So I've got to do something a bit better than that. So I've got a bit more uh, thinking to do how to uh, um, make the connection between these two pieces um, as stiff as I would like it to be. Or as, um, yeah, stiff I suppose, inflexible anyway. So I've got a bit more, a bit more thinking to do. Okay, so I've given a bit of thought to what I can do to um, uh, replace this uh, bracket. Um, it's quite thin as you see in it and I can see it twists. So one option is to um, use a bit of 3mm thick material, something like that and um, box the sides in a little bit. I'm sure that would um, stiffen it up. Um, I don't know how much it would stiffen it up though, probably enough. So that's definitely an option. Another option is I've got a bit of 20mm thick plate here. I could basically mill this shape out um, from, from solid. Um, Seems a little bit uh, uh, OTT, but I'm sure I get the job done. So that's definitely an option. I know I can do it. Last option is to um, make one of these same pieces, <coughs> but from 8mm thick bar. And I've got a 30 ton press, so I've never tried to bend this sort of stuff in that way before. But uh, it would be quick and easy if it, if it worked. So that's what I'm going to try first. Okay, so I've got the bar in the uh, in the bending jig, and I'll be able to use the original piece as a um, a template to get the, the bending angle correct. So as you can see it's only taking about five tons to do the business which is pretty good so I better check the bending angle before we go any further and we we're actually getting pretty close we go a bit more and a bit more so as that's sitting now it's about right but I expect there's some spring in the metal so we go just a touch further I think Actually, that's about spot on now, so just a touch more. Okay, that's looking pretty close, so I think we'll take it out and uh, have a, a butcher's, as they say. So I'd say that's uh, pretty close to the mark. I might uh, check this with um, check this with a, a proper angle gauge now and see what it looks like. So um, as I think you can see here. We do in fact need to go just a little bit more. So we'll put it back in there and see if we can get a, I don't know, three degrees or something, a bit more anyway. Got it back in the square. Yeah, that's a bit better. Let's 
So, and I'll put this back in as a as a guide, just as a visual guide. Alright, give it another couple of kadunk kadunks. And I think that's got it back to where it's under load. Looks like there's a bit of play in the system that's got to be taken out. Right, that definitely moved. I still have a bit more, I reckon. Alright, let's see how that looks. And yes, I think we're now a bit too far the other way. Okay, uh, so I did actually go slightly past the required angle and had to come back, but uh, it was a quick stab with the press to do that. So I think you'll be able to see, uh, or I hope you can, that the angle now is exactly spot on. Um, certainly as good as I was hoping to get. And um, I'll, I'll set up another shot in the tick and uh, just show you that it's... Uh, we got right on 45. But... Um, I was quite impressed with the way the press did it. Um, it's made a very clean, tidy job of it. Quite a sharp angle, really. And uh, it never broke into a sweat. It never went over five tonnes. So I realised that there was a better way to show that um, we got exactly the right angle. This um, 45 degree square uh, shows it pretty clearly, I think. So, very happy with that. Okay, well, um, I've made up now um, a heavy duty version of this guy. I think you can tell the difference. Um, so I've um, tidied it up, <clears throat> put some holes in it, tapped two of them, and it's uh, good to go on here now. So that uh, all goes together according to plan. I might put uh, another hole further up there uh, yet um, to uh, minimise the uh, drill overhang from the uh, pivot point. That might uh, might also help to. Um, uh, reduce uh, unwanted movement and uh, um, twisting and so on. Anyway, so that, that bit's all good to go now. I've um, uh, drilled a hole in the uh, cross hole in here so we can put a, a bolt through there. Butter fingers. I'll set this up so that, that um, um, this face here is in rough alignment with the, the angle that it will normally have to maximise the support in this direction and minimise the, uh, the twist that was the whole driver for this uh, change. Anyway, so that uh, will go on to the, uh, onto the grinder now. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how much stiffer that is. I think it's going to be a lot stiffer. So I've got to now make the um, revised piece for doing the, the in-feed of the drill. So that's the next bit. Okay, so what I had intended to do um, uh, was to replace this block with something that's a bit like uh, what I did for the um, indexing pointer on the AR5, which involved a left-hand thread and um, uh, an index ring with marks on it and so on. It's a bit of work doing that. It's easy enough, but it's a bit of work. So what I thought I'd do first is just exhaust the possibilities of a really simple solution. So I'll put a, a little arm on a, a longer screw here, and that's just threaded and loctited on. And what you'll see is that even with this limited um, arc of operation, we still get 30 thousandths of an inch of um, pushing the drill out 
off the end of the channel. And I think that's actually going to be enough. So what I can do is, without knowing exactly how much, move it a little bit, lock it, a little bit more, lock it, a little bit more, lock it. And I'm only getting a couple of thousandths of an inch at a time doing that. And uh, I honestly think that's going to be good enough. I mean, it was so easy to do, it's got to be worth a try anyway. So that's where I'm at. But what I also want to do is to put um, a cap on the end of this uh, thread here. Uh, so I'll have a disc that's uh, the biggest disc that will happily fit within this groove. And that'll be what bears on the end of the drill will bear on that disc. So that I won't have to worry about moving the screw into a different uh, height of hole. It'll, it'll accommodate just about anything, I think, in one go. And what I've got in mind is to have a disc with a threaded boss on the back and for the threaded boss to be long enough that it will give me a bit of additional adjustment here. So if I do happen to exhaust the um, the 25 uh, mil, uh, the 30 thou of movement I've got here on a given draw, uh, given sharpening, I can reset it using um, pushing this out. But I'm achieving all of this movement of the drill towards the stone by sliding the drill within the groove, which is the object object of this whole exercise. So we don't lose the um, alignment of the cutting lips uh, being horizontal. So over to the lathe to make um, this uh, threaded cap. I found myself a piece of scrap. I'll be able to um, turn the end down on that. It's 25 OD, so it's a lot of the way there already. Myself a little shop drawing here. It's for the dimensions that I'm wanting to get. All of the dimensions are pretty uh, approximate. It really doesn't matter very much. It's just uh, fairly nominal. So we've got the OD here already. So I want to reduce this piece uh, down to 13. We'll go with 600. We'll start with a one millimetre depth of cut, just to clear some of that thread out the way. Come back for another one. One millimetre deep depth of cut. So now we're <coughs> now we're clear of the threads. We'll check what we've got. It's nineteen point five. We want to get down to thirteen. Let's see how we go with a two millimetre depth of cut. Oh, that went all right. We'll uh, speed it up a bit now. The diameter is getting down a bit there. Fifteen. So we got uh, yeah, fifteen. We've got about uh, two millimeters to come off. So we'll take a one millimeter depth of cut this time. So 
So that should be somewhere near where we need to be. 13 and a half, so we've got another 0.25 uh, to come off. This will be our final cut. Slightly warm. And we're only looking for approximately 13. I guess it's not a bad approximation. Alright, now we get this boss to length. And again, the 20 approximately will be good enough. Try and do this without getting in the way of the camera. Leave just a little for facing off. Right, we'll chop it off there. Looks like I lost the centre height on the parting tool. Oh, never mind. I'm going to face that off. Break that corner. So now we're ready to um, drill for the, um, the tapped hole. Now this is going to be a blind hole, uh, so I have to um, be, be careful with the tapping. Okay, uh, first up, let's get a sensor drill in, into play. Should be enough to make sure the drill starts in the right place. You'll hear plenty of bearing noise from this old girl. She's done lots of work. <laughs> There's no spring chicken. That gets the job done. It didn't cost very much. Well now, we want to go in 20 basically. So we just hit where the um, diameter changes. Take the drill out. This was a number seven drill to give me a 5.1 millimeter hole for the tap. So we're doing this um, a quarter 20. This is a telescopic uh, pointy thing <laughs> to support the back end of the uh, tap, keep things lined up. So that, that will engage in that uh, centre in the back of the tap handle. So we've got to go back a bit. Get some tap magic cutting stuff on there. Start winding in. It's back out of the way. And back once in a while to break off the chips that curl up inside the flutes. Looks like we've hit the bottom. No, not quite. I'll put this into free wheeling so when it hits the bottom, the chuck will turn instead of breaking the tap. 
So I must be pretty close to the bottom. So I think we'll run the intermediate tap in now. With the taper tap, the, uh, the grind is all the way back to here. So it's a quite a long taper. With the intermediate, it's a much shorter taper. So this is easier to wind in when you're starting the thread, but this guy will take the thread deeper in the hole. And then we'll switch over to the bottoming tap to get right to the bottom. Let's just change the view a little bit here. at the bottom. So time to change machines. Okay so this is the gadget we use for putting uh, easily putting um, a hex pattern on something. It's much easier and quicker than playing around with the um, dividing head. So we have a right size collet, a bit of material we want to work on. Um, it snaps in there, it goes in there, sticks out a little bit, into there, and just let me get some repeatability, all right, now so exactly where that is, doesn't matter, but we'll just slide it back to the stop and we'll be good. And I'll tighten up that collet. This guy's sitting waiting ready to go, so I might as well use it. Alright, so we'll, <clears throat> we'll bring this uh, down to touch off on there, we'll call that our zero, because this is 13mm um, diameter, if we refer back to our little shop drawing, um, the hex has got to be 11 across the flats, so basically I've got to come down a millimetre from each side. Alright, just touching there. We zero the quarter arrow at that. Now we've got to find the, the end face so we can come in six as per uh, the drawing. So we'll just come down a bit to start with and um, come across until we just touch here. Just touching there to a zero X and we're good to go. I'm going to come down a millimetre so I think we'll do that in a couple of steps. That's 0.5. So we'll take a cut at that and then uh, check our dimension. See how close we are to uh, creating our 11. Put it in gear, right. So we should be at, should be at 12 and a half now. I think I will use the micrometer for this. To get to my 11 uh, millimeters across the flat, I've got to take off um, another 0.506 on this side and then I should be set to just flip it over and do the same depth of cut on the other. Well, let's see if it works out that way.
Let's see how close to 11 we are. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to be close enough. Basically I just want to get a 7 16th of an inch spanner on there, so we'll just check that. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. I just worked out that size from using a standard um, nut. So that's good. I'm happy with that. We get for that last one. <laughs> well, certainly not going to complain about that. <laughs> Finished with that operation. It's back to the lathe now. I just cleaned that up a bit and. Um, Part it off and we're done. So I've got a new tip and off we go. Well that's a lot better isn't it? That's more like what we want. Right, done, let's go and see if it fits. Okay, well that's finished making that. Um, simple enough little job, didn't take that long. Um, so if it doesn't work out, no great loss. Anyway, that's intended to go on there. Like that. And it can be locked in place with the back nut that's already on there. Just uh, do that. Okay, so the way this is supposed to work, and um, until I try it, I don't know, but this is the idea. Put your drill on there, and you get up to 30 thousandths, pushing it towards the grinder, which should be enough for ordinary sharpening. But if it isn't, um, we'll stop at that point, slap a little clamp on up here, just to hold the drill in place. Excuse <coughs> me. Back that off. So recover the 30 thou of movement. And push this back up behind the drill. Tighten the block down. And uh, now you've got another 30 thousand to go. Until I start using it, I won't know whether that's an incredible pain in the backside or it actually turns out to be quite simple because for most sharpening we don't need more than 30,000 advancement into the stone. So anyway, that's the plan. So that bit's done for, for now. If it doesn't work out, I'll go back to the original idea of um, 
um, a proper left hand thread and all the rest of it so there's a, a lot of a lot more than just this amount of travel we'll come up with some other way of getting more travel anyway maybe um, actually I suppose if I had a, a thumb wheel on there instead of the lever that would probably do it just as well anyway we'll, we'll try it and see okay so last thing I want to do is an improvement for this is to make something which makes it easier to get the um, lips horizontal so that's what I'm going to look at next okay well I've got uh, one concept that seems to have some promise that's just a, a space of block actually this is um, uh, from the rear leaf springs of a Ford Transit believe it or not it's another piece that's been pressed into service it was a weird shape originally I just uh, put it on the mini machine and basically squared it up anyway so and that's just a nut and bolt so I can set that like that rotate the drill around until it uh, sits there if I've got to make this slightly higher I can do that of course so converted the concept of the um, uh, cast iron block with the adjustable bolt to this um, didn't take very much effort which is just as well because it turned out to be quite useless but uh, anyway it's a couple of um, support brackets from a solar panel they just bolt together so you get got the height adjustment I had to skim out a bit of uh, material here because in their previous use these ridges had been damaged so I you know, just cleaned that up I made up this little bolt with a thumb wheel to get this little bolt with a thumb wheel to get the height adjustment which all worked fine so the idea was to get that underneath the lip of the drill and then uh, use it to set the lip horizontal and it worked really well at setting that lip horizontal the, the one on this side the, the lip that points down so I think you can see that uh, yes the drill lips are parallel from this point of view but what I and, and even as you rotate from that point of view they stay parallel but the point of view that the grind wheel has is very different its point of view is much more like that because the drill is laid over at an angle for the the sharpening and you can see very clearly now that from that point of view the grinding wheels point of view when the one it's going to be working on that one is horizontal it doesn't perceive or that one is not horizontal in that from that same point of view so setting using this one to set that one is fatally flawed and just a bonehead move on my part so just as well this thing was quick and easy to make because like I say it turned out to be no, no use at all so regarding this um, lever and the long screw and all the rest of it and the nonsense that I went through yesterday showing how I could fiddle around with the clamps and all sorts and get the extra distance I had an epiphany last night when I was trying to get to sleep I gather epiphany actually has two meanings there's the religious one and the a sudden revelation a secular revelation shall we say anyway my revelation was that if I replace this thing by a long screw and a removable arm ie an allen key I could have my cake and eat it too so I can get um, easily get a very fine adjustment that's five thousandths of there and even without the dial gauge there I've just closed my eyes so I can get one or two or four it's really quite easy with this to get a small adjustment and, and have a pretty fair idea what you're going to get even without the dial gauge being there and of course if I do need to uh, exceed the um, the 30 thou that was available with the other way of doing it and just wind the screw so that's a lot a lot more sanitary and I think that's the way I'm going to go
Was the, the locking mechanism hasn't changed. Just uh, lock it wherever I want to. So I think that's going to be a lot better. Anyway, so now I've got all the elements of the uh, solution finalised. I've got my um, more rigid upright. I've got a more rigid um, support bracket. I've got the uh, length adjustment here and uh, a button, a large diameter button here for the drill to back against. So I'll just give it a quick go. Um, I'm sure it'll be uh, an improvement on what I had before. Uh, but let's see. So that's got that set right. Okay, so we'll uh, set the angle for the um, uh, secondary clearance. So we'll go to the for 20 degrees. Close enough. I'll do for our 20. Get this over. Right. Well, the vacuum cleaner is very loud. I'm afraid. thing on and I'm going to do this at 8 degrees I'll be able to read it better if I turned it on let's go with that at this stage I'm going to be moving one or two thousandths of a time I can certainly say that the new drill jig setup is much more rigid and consistent so it's easier to get this sort of result. Anyway, let's go and drill a hole and see how it works. I wouldn't say it went through it like a knife through butter, but uh, it was doing a 7 16 or 11 millimetre hole with no pilot through 10 millimetre thick mild steel plate. So uh, pretty good I guess. Let's check the size of the hole. Inspect the end of the drill too. It seems to have survived the experience without any obvious issue. I can tell you it's still got a sharp edge. It would probably cut in faster if I had uh, used say 10 degrees um, on the uh, cutting angle instead of 8. But I wanted to experiment. I'll check that with the micrometer. When I can find it. The drill is 11.8 and the hole 11.89 so basically about 0.1 oversized or th what's that three or four thousandths that's pretty good I mean you never expect twist drills to to drill an accurately sized hole so I'm happy with that well that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching